There are several types of relationships that we look at when we're looking at graphs um, and it all comes down to positive and negative and what we call curved relationships is what we're looking at here. When you think about a graph you've got your x-axis, you've got your y-axis and in our case we normally plot our dependent variable on the y and our independent variable on the x and when you think about it we have four quadrants in this graph. If it goes up this direction it's a positive, if it goes this direction it's a positive, if it goes this direction it's a negative and this direction is a negative. So if we have a line that's going like this that means as one variable increases the other variable increases as well. We call that a positive correlation just like this. Now if you tend to have a lot of error in your data you'll have what we call a moderate positive correlation because your data is actually spread out away from your average line because of error usually or other um, variables affecting the relationship. If you have one variable increasing but the other decreasing you end up getting a graph line that looks like this and we call that a negative relationship or a negative correlation because as our independent variable is increasing our dependent variable is actually getting smaller or going down. The last relationship we're going to look at is this one which is a curved relationship. Now a curved relationship means that you cannot plot a straight line there accurately at all and we actually have to look at other mathematical equations to express this relationship. The linear one is actually covered by the y equals mx plus c equation but we'll go into that another time. The curve relationship is where we start to get squares and, and powers in there. Um, now curve relationships are seen an awful lot in nature. We don't often see perfectly linear relationships and I'm going to show you some curved relationships from nature now. The two ones that you'll see an awful lot are what we call a J curve and an S curve. J curves are also known as exponential graphs because the, um, the Y value actually increases what we call exponentially. Now we call this a J curve because as you can see there's an obvious J shape here. Now an example of this is the human population up until now. We've actually increased in such a high rate that it forms a J curve and a graph. Now that you see this when essentially you don't have factors limiting growth um, and in the case of human population especially because of the amount of food that's available and the medical treatment and that that we have we're actually seeing an exponential rate of growth but eventually that's going to stop because food is starting to shorten out. Now in nature we don't see exponential growths like this unless you find say an invasive species coming in. In nature we see this S curve here and as you can see here the S seems to be apparent on this graph sort of like if you look at that that's like an S. Okay you just got to use your imagination a little bit. Now in real life we see this often especially when population limits reach factors that are affecting their their limits. So um, you get to a, a food source is going to limit a population's growth or if there's too many people in a city eventually you're going to have disease spreading quite quickly because people are packed in so tightly. So limiting factors like food and disease and water will actually stop an exponential graph and turn it into an S curve quite quickly in nature. So there are two different types of graphs that you'll be looking at and analyzing in different biological investigations we go into.